Thank you for joining me this week for more stories and a special shout out to Fred. Hi, Fred. And Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Thanks for joining me. So these stories this week, they all have to do with trees. So your first prop that, that we asked you to get was a picture or an image of a tree in your head. And I want you to picture a tall tree with a, a tall trunk. And there's a tree that has lots of branches up at the top. And this could be a tree that maybe you drew in a drawing once, or a tree that's in your backyard or down your street, or a tree that you saw on TV or in a movie, or maybe just a tree that you imagine right now. So imagine this tree, and most of our stories, or I'm sorry, all of our stories will be dealing with this tree. Okay, so I have my tree here. And for the first story, we're gonna need to be bears. So make sure you have some room to move around here because I want you to, well, move like a bear. So when I think of a bear, I think of a bear as having very heavy paws. So you can almost let your paws hang and kind of hit the ground. And I like to kind of let my lips just hang, right? A bear carries around a lot of weight with him here. So just kind of move around like a bear. Very heavy steps. And what, what do you use to smell? Do, do you use your elbow? Or do you use your, your ear? Can you move your nose like a bear might? And this bear, us, let's pretend that we smell something up in the tree. So let's get our claws here and let's climb. 
climb up onto the tree. And way off on the branch, there's an apple. So hold on to the trunk with one paw and try to reach. But it's too far. So you slide down the tree and sit up against the tree, just waiting. Bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, 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 ba bum, bum. So, in your tree, hopefully, there are many tall branches way up top. And now, I want you to pretend that you are either a baby squirrel or a baby mouse. And they're looking down at this apple. And, and they've never seen an apple before. So, my first question, and if you can write in, what does an apple look like? How would you describe an apple? And if you have an apple, please get it. How would you describe this? If this is the first time you've ever seen this, what does it look like? What shape is it? What color is it? Mine's a very dark red, but I know that not all apples are dark red. So just look at this apple or pear or any fruit that you have. Look very closely. How would you describe this? Oh, we're back to the bear looking up. Bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, 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 ba bum. Why do you think the bear keeps looking up at the apple? Hmm. We are back to being the squirrel or the mouse and we're at the very top. And here's how this is. So we have the bear down on the ground and he's looking up at the apple, which is out on the branch. Now above is the squirrel and the mouse looking down at the apple here. And now, if you've never seen an apple before and you want to check this out, one thing you can do is listen. So what do you use to listen? Do you use your, your foot? Yeah, okay. You put your foot up to it? Huh, I don't hear anything. Um, um, do you use the back of your head? I don't hear anything. What do you use? Oh, an ear. So, listen to your apple. What does your apple say? Right in, Geo, Evan, Frank. What does your apple say? Hmm. Now, if you've never listened to an apple before, you have some homework. Your homework is listen to a piece of fruit and tell me, what does your fruit say? You can tell me this next week or right now. Hmm. Back to being the bear. Bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, 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 ba bum, bum. Now then, we're going to feel this apple. What does an apple feel like? Hmm. Do you know that squirrels and mice, they have five fingers like us? But they're a lot smaller. So try to make your hand your paw very small as you feel this apple. Is it hard or soft? Is it smooth or is it rough? Hmm. Can you feel colors? Can you feel that it's yellow? Can you feel that it's green or red? Hmm. What do you think, Emma? What do you think, Leo? Bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, bum, ba bum, bum, bum. This bear has a lot of great patience. Hmm. Now then, the moment of truth. 
the baby squirrel and the baby mouse are going to taste this apple. Now then, let's see how tiny you can make your tongue. Because, you know, squirrels and rat, uh, squirrels and mice, they, they don't have big tongues like us. They have tiny ones. Let's see how tiny you can make your tongue. And just when they're about to take a little lick of this apple, Bum 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 bum. It falls in the bear's head. Now then, if you're a bear, prepare to take a big bear bite out of your apple, and just then you hear please. What? We look all around. Please bear share with me, please. What? And just now, you see the baby squirrel and the baby mouse. Oh, please, oh, please share apple. Now you have a choice. Uh, are you going to share your apple? So if you are going to share your apple, then take a little bit and give it to the squirrel here. And the squirrel says, Oh, thank you, bear. Or, and, you know, if you decide to share it with the mouse, give a little bit, give it to the mouse. Oh, thank you, bear. And then you can take a big bear bite. <laughs> or you can decide, hmm, no, I'm not going to share with you. It's your choice. You are the bear. So if you're not going to share, eat the whole apple up. <laughs> Tasty. All right, wipe your bare lips. That was a good snack. Now later on that day, mm, bears don't walk like this. Later on that day, you're hungry. Bears get very, very hungry. And if you decided to share with the squirrel, suddenly you felt some plunks on your head. Plunk. Plunk. And you look up, and the squirrel's way up at the top of the tree, and he's looking down. Oh, little bear, do you want some nuts? I have some nuts. I'm making hungry. So if you're the squirrel, pretend that you're dropping nuts. And if you're the bear, well, catch the nuts. But if you didn't share with the squirrel, and the squirrel might not share with you, hmm. And later on, after you've eaten a nice fish dinner, you're still a little hungry as the bear. You're walking along, and way down underneath the tree, you see the little mouse appear. Hey there, bear. Did, did you want some cheese? I found some cheese. Did you want some cheese? Take the cheese. So if you shared with the mouse, the mouse might share some cheese with you, right? So take your big bear paw. And But if you didn't share with the mouse, then the mouse might not share with you. So I guess the point of this story is, if you're ever eating an apple and you hear, please share with me, please. Think about sharing your apple. Alrighty, so that was the end of story one. Thank you, give yourselves a round of applause with your tiny, mouse or a squirrel paws. For this next story, you're going to need to get your hats together and you're going to need your stuffed animals. So we asked you to get some stuffed animals or other creatures. If you have those, put them someplace high. Like if you're in your room, you know, sit on the floor, put them up on your bed or uh, put them up on a windowsill. 
or a high shelf somewhere. Right? We want to pretend that these animals are way up in the tree. So put them someplace high. Okay? And then get your hats together and come on back. I'm going to get my hats here that I have. And I want to give a shout out to some more friends that have joined us. I want to say hi to Bria. Hey, Bria. Hey, Sophie. Right? I want to say hi to Coda. Thanks for coming. Gabby. Amelia, thanks for joining us here, right? We have a Jason in the house. We have an AJ here, right? Leo's back in action here. Emma's here, okay? Um, let me get the hats and let's move on to story two. All righty, so, Here's the hats that I have. Maybe you have some similar hats. And I have some fancy ladies hats here. I also have a winter hat. Maybe you have some winter caps. I also have some baseball caps here. I have some gardening hats. And I have a farmer's cap as well. All right, please write in what kind of hats do you have? So for this story, if you can, put all your hats on your head. Try to stack them up. If they fall, that's okay. You can just carry them. So for this story, we're going to be pretending that we are someone that has to sell these caps. We are cap salesmen. And cap is another name for hat. So we're... Take a look. We have a nice green meadow, green field. It's a town that has a lot of trees and a lot of houses here. So we need to call out to these people who might want to buy our hats. So the question I have for you is, what would you say? If you wanted to sell these hats, what would you say? Hmm. Hats! Hats for sale, get your hats here. We have winter caps, we have gardening caps, hot day like today. We have some news caps here, we have some Phillies caps here. Caps, caps, get your caps. And there was silence. The cat man didn't see anybody. Nobody even looked out their window to look at him. Huh. Better try again. Caps! Caps for sale! Get your caps! They're on my head! They can be moved from my head to your head here! Caps! A uh, quarter piece here! One quarter! Get your cap! And it was silent. So how quiet can you be? Catman started to get a little hungry. He didn't bring a lunch because he thought that someone would buy a cap and then he could go buy his lunch. So when you get hungry, what rumbles? Oh, I better sell a cap or two, otherwise I'll be hungry. Caps, caps for sale. Get your caps here. My caps work as trumpets here. Ba -ba -da -ba. You can get a musical hat here. Anyone? Anyone? How about a nickel each? And it was quiet. He didn't hear anything. No lunch today. And it was hot. What does it look like when you're hot? Not only hot, but you're wearing 10 hats. He decided he had to, he had to sit down. He took off his caps.
He put them down next to him, and he laid up against the tree. And he started to sleep. Now show me, what does it look like when you're asleep? You start to have wonderful dreams. Right in, what are some dreams that you might have if you sold caps? They made a cap with your face on it. Everyone wore your caps. Ooh. Maybe they named the cap after you. When you woke up, you were happy. There's all these wonderful dreams. Oh, well, I can't wait to sell all these caps and then they'll, they'll name a cap after me or I'll sell so many caps that they'll put my picture on a cap. Oh, I can't wait to sell all these caps this afternoon. Something's missing. I didn't eat my caps, did I? They didn't float down the river, did they? Pretend that you're looking all around for your caps, which have now gone missing. No? Where could they be? They're not down here. They're not. Look under your foot. Sometimes things are always under your foot. Just worms. They're not behind the bush. No. Where could they be? My goodness. And just then he looked up. Oh, geez. Look at all those animals up there in the tree. I see. Is that a bat? Is that a dog up there? A dinosaur? Is it a snake? And, and, a, and a bear? And a jellyfish? And what kind of stuffed animals do you have? And just then, saw his hats. Hey, those are my hats! I'm tall, but I'm not that tall! Come on! I need to sell those caps! Oh! And as he was jumping, the animals just laughed at him. So I want you to pick an animal that's up here, either a dog, or a, a dinosaur, or a snake, or a seal, and laugh like that animal. <laughs> oh no! How am I going to get these down? Uh, oh, maybe I'll yell at You creatures, you give me back these hats! That didn't work. Uh, let's see. Hey, if you come down from the tree, I'll give you a treat. Yeah, that doesn't work with my dog either. Uh, huh. Hey, you animals! I want you to know something! And when he did that with his finger, he noticed something. The creatures moved their paws. When he did this, they started moving theirs. Huh. He decided to move his foot. And they moved their feet. He decided to spin around. And they spun around. That got him to thinking. Hmm. If they do what I do, maybe I can get the caps down somehow. He put his hand on his head. They put their paws on their heads. 
He went like this. And just then, when he took off his imaginary hat to throw it down, they started throwing the hats down, one by one. The lovely ladies' hats. Oh, what else did they, oh, the winter cap. Oh, yes, yes, the hat that lights up. Yes, what else? Oh, the news cap here. Oh, the hat with no advertisements on it. Why advertise for them, right? The garden cap here. Oh, the California hat. All the hats are coming back. And the best of all, the garden cap. Oh, thank you. Thank you, creatures, for tossing down the hats here. Oh, oh. And even though he didn't have a hat named after him, or even though he hadn't sold any hats, it was the happiest day that he had in some time. He was so thankful and grateful that the hats came back that in the end he thought, I can't sell these. I can't sell these hats. You know who might appreciate these hats even more? The animals up in the tree. So in the end, he had a change of heart and he decided to donate these hats back to the creatures up in the tree. And that's the end of Caps for Sale, with a new twist of an ending here. All right? So we have one more short story left, one more very short story. I hope you stick around for this final story here. In this story, we're going to be two creatures. We're going to be a fox to be a crow. So, I really like having foxes in the stories because foxes are really smart creatures. It seems that foxes are always trying to, to get something, but, you know, not really to do a lot of work to get it. They're very clever. So I want you to be a fox. So you're on four paws here, and foxes have long, bushy tails here. And I feel like foxes are always like the, one of the happiest creatures around. Whenever you see a fox, they always have a big grin on their face. Right? So we're humming a tune. Make sure you're sniffing. Move your tail. You're smelling something up on a branch it smells like a piece of cheese. Or it could be the apple from, from the first story. Foxes have very strong noses, much stronger than ours. He's a bird, a, a crow, who has this cheese that, with its beak here. So let's sit like the crow here, right? So let's get your feet, your talons around the branch, and you have your, your wings here, and you're kind of, you have your beak, and you're... And you don't see the fox coming. So the fox has to think, how do I get this cheese down? I... I can't climb up the tree. Oh, I know. Now I asked you to get a big sneaky smile here. Let's see your sneaky smile. Okay. All right, Amelia, Cora, thanks for joining us here with our big sneaky smile here. Mm, he's sneaky, but he's smart too. Right, so he sees the crow and starts to say, oh, I have never seen such a beautiful bird. Oh, how I wish I had feathers of my own so I could be like you. Oh, yes. So if you were going to give a compliment to a bird here, what, what would you say? And again, you're, 
trying to get the piece of cheese that the bird has. You may not even be serious. You may give a sneaky compliment. What would you say? Oh, yes, the, the best bird I ever did see. Look at those lovely feathers there. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And, uh, oh, it's a very smart, too, a very smart bird here. Oh, yes. I do believe crow means wonderful creature in some, in fox language, yes. In our language, that's what it means here, right? Foxes are queen, uh, um, crows are queens, crows are queens here, right? You almost got a little too sneaky there, fox here, and he pulled on his whiskers here. But the, the, the crows are the queens for us here. Oh, but I hear other birds and they're, they're, they're singing. I, I don't hear you singing. I mean, and think about it, right? If you have a piece of cheese in your mouth, you can't really sing. But because this crow had heard such delightful things about herself, she decided at that moment here that she would give a and just when she opened her beak, down went the piece of cheese. Now, with your fox sneaky grin, let's catch the cheese. Make sure your tongue falls out of your mouth a lot like foxes do. Mmm, I do enjoy a free concert, especially with a meal. Now my final question for you is, what is the moral of this story? And thank you for joining me this week. Thank you for acting like bears and squirrels, and mice, and foxes. Next week, we are going to be going fishing. Next week, we have a story all about, um, well, how to be a lion. So we will be sending the prop list for next week. But I hope you join me next Thursday at 10.30. And if you'd like... Can you send in a picture of you